what happens when mistakes are made in a murder investigation of all things? Chief investigative reporter Dwayne Pullman has spent three years looking into this local murder case. And tonight he begins a very important five on your side investigation. Dwayne. Ted, this case is filled with sex, secrets, and surprises. And at the center, a very serious question. Did the system convict the wrong men? One word of warning, the subject and the pictures tonight are disturbing. On April 1st, 1999, the murder of a mother of five in her own home stunned the small town of Alliance, Ohio. But I never expected her to end up dead. The victim, 26-year-old Yvonne Lane, a beautiful, vivacious woman found in a pool of her own blood. Her throat slashed while her children slept. Sad. The attack grabbed headlines as police hunted for a killer. A day later, detectives identified their prime suspect, David Thorne, the father of one of the children. The motive? Child support. Thorne was ordered to pay. You think he got the right ones? Yes. You still believe that? Yes, I do. But David Thorne had an alibi. He was in class, and other records show Thorne was nowhere near the murder scene that night. Three months after the murder, police announced this man, Joe Wilkes, confessed to killing Yvonne Lane, that it was a murder-for-hire plot, that David Thorne had paid Wilkes to do it. Frankly, David is the only link between Joe and, and Yvonne. It didn't take a jury long to convict David Thorne. Wilkes pleaded guilty. Both are now serving life sentences. That was seven years ago. And for most people here in Alliance, the murder has all but faded from memory. But for some, the crime and the convictions never quite added up. For one local woman, nagging questions about what really happened here led her on a quest for the truth. Nothing about this case makes sense. Nothing about the case they presented makes sense. Sue Gless was a postal clerk here in Atwater when David Thorne's family came to her and asked for help. I'm not a PI, I'm not, you know, I'm not a licensed anything. I sell stamps. But Thorne's family knew Sue, who had a knack for getting to the truth. I've been a detective in this case, I guess. I just, uh, pushy nosy broad. Little did she know the case would consume her for seven long years. I would have stepped back seven years ago if I had any doubt in my mind. Over the next two nights, you'll meet the expert who says this case was botched. It is so poor. It is it is a almost a, it is literally a, a textbook example of what not to do. As well as the detective who investigated the crime. It's disturbing that somebody outside the department was on, on the scene. And the police chief who admits mistakes were made. I would say that I could have exercised better judgment. Plus, we tracked down a key eyewitness whose story has never been heard. I was a witness to something that morning. And it feels like they were hiding me or something from everybody else. And you'll see the prison interviews. Did you murder Yvonne Lane? Tonight, our investigation continues. I'll guide you through the most disturbing parts of this case, including an allegation of sexual shakedowns. Plus, an expert writes a book with a chapter devoted to what he calls this botched case. And you'll get a chance to weigh in yourself online. It is a real murder mystery that has many saying the system did indeed convict the wrong men. I'll see you back here tonight at 11. And a cold case is about to get red hot again. Tonight, Chief Investigator Dwayne Pullman digs up new evidence in the local murder for hire trial that grabbed headlines not so long ago. Dwayne? Lee, I've spent three years investigating the murder of a mother of five in the case that put two men behind bars for life. Tonight, new evidence and experts who say the case was botched so badly the system did indeed convict the wrong man. In the spring of 1999, Yvonne Lane, a young mother of five, was found in a pool of her own blood. Joe Wilkes was convicted of her murder. David Thorne was convicted of hiring him. You're absolutely convinced these guys are innocent. No doubt in my mind, I'd, I'd stake my life on it. After investigating this case for seven years, Sue Gless, a postal clerk turned amateur investigator, says both men are innocent of the crime that landed them life in prison. I'm 100% convinced. 
No doubt in my mind. Yvonne Lane lived with Linda McLaughlin's son, Eric Cameron, in McLaughlin's home for four years. McLaughlin and others say Yvonne Lane had a dark side. You know, she just, she played so dangerously. Extorting money through sex. Police knew Lane had been a prostitute and topless dancer, and that she had many sex partners. I know she had some history. Detectives originally identified McLaughlin's son, Eric Cameron, as the main suspect in the murder. But there was a problem. He was in jail at the time. So how did this trail lead to David Thorne? Almost immediately. I mean, the very next day, I went to the, the police station to talk to him. Police had a theory and a motive. David Thorne was the father of one of Yvonne's children, and a court had ordered him to pay child support just weeks before Yvonne Lane was killed. But the custody arrangement between Thorne and Yvonne was described in testimony as agreeable and congenial. Her and I had a decent relationship. Detectives targeted another young man, Joe Wilkes. You're going to have sex with Yvonne. Yeah. On the night Yvonne Lane was killed, Wilkes admits he went to Yvonne's home. And she told me that she was supposed to have some company that, uh, for me to come back later on. Did she say who the company was? No. Wilk says he went back an hour later, entering a bloody mess. Found her laying on the floor dead, blood all over the place. What'd you do? Stepped over the body, went to see if the kids were all right. The door was locked, so I knew the kids were in there, and I left. Wilkes, who was just 18 years old, had trampled through a murder scene. What went through your mind? Nothing. I, I couldn't think. Scared and confused, Wilkes says this former detective, John Leach, forced him to confess. Wilkes was a friend of David Thorne's. And they had told me a general story about how to put David in it. Detective Leach says that never happened. It's not a false confession. It's not a false confession. Wilkes and David Thorne were convicted in a murder-for-hire plot. I don't care what they say. You're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. It's a cold case, but after eight years, this murder filled with sex, surprises, and intrigue is as hot as ever. Tonight, we take you inside the crime scene to reveal the mistakes and missed clues. Then, and only then, can you decide for yourself whether the system convicted the wrong man. Open this criminal justice textbook and you'll find a chapter on how not to investigate a crime scene. This is the actual crime scene. It is literally a, a textbook example of what not to do. According to the book's author, the investigation of Yvonne Lane's murder was so messed up... It's like they didn't even care. Detectives may have missed the real murderer. The best word to describe it is inadequate, uh, severely inadequate. Uh, and and to the to the uh, to the point of being uh, belligerently inadequate. In an interview from his home in Alaska, Brent Turvey, a nationally known criminal forensics expert, picked apart what he calls a botched case. Homicide scene should be tight as a drum. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. Police and civilians alike trampled through this crime scene. This crime scene was being treated as a spectacle. This is a picture of a foot of a detective taking photos. A few shots later, the very same footprint he just made appears as evidence. Even the police chief brought an outsider, a woman, to the murder scene. She is not a sworn officer. The chief now admits he made a mistake. I, I would say that I could have exercised better judgment. And to make matters worse, police covered the body with a blanket taken from Yvonne's bedroom. Yeah, that would be a, a level of contamination, yes. A pretty substantial one. Um, Potentially, yes. The murder weapon was a problem, too. Detectives said this knife killed Devon Lane. It matched the one missing from her kitchen and had a fingerprint that has yet to be identified. But weeks later, the same detectives announced this knife, purchased by Joe Wilkes, was the real murder weapon. We were able to recover the receipt from it from, from Kmart, where Wilkes had bought it. And, uh, you know... That ties Wilkes to that knife. That knife had what experts described as protein on it, but it had no prints. Wilkes says police brought him the knife. They never stated nothing uh, that that was the murder weapon. On the stand, Wilkes said they, the police, were the ones that stated to me how the murder was committed. 
Wilkes confessed to killing Yvonne on the couch, reaching around her, cutting her throat. But expert Brett Turvey says the murder could not have happened that way. It is not possible that she received any of the, the injuries that she received on the couch. Blood patterns, Turvey says, tell the real story. The killer struck while the victim was standing, here by the sliding glass doors, slicing from behind. She uh, begins to spurt blood, uh, uh, pumping blood uh, uh, violently out of, her, out of her neck. The killer supported the victim on the way down, then pulled her across the floor. And there's drag and, and smear marks in the blood. She's being assisted from the uh, sliding glass door area to the area between the couch and the television. It was a methodical killing. The crime scene itself was staged by the offender. Hardly what Joe Wilkes described. Why would he describe the murder? Did he, given everything else, why would he describe the murder in a way that it I didn't don't know? Happen? Maybe he just, you know, the, the mind does weird things. But that's not the only weird thing. If Wilkes killed her, our expert says, he would have been covered in blood. According to Turvey, these marks clearly show the killer was covered in blood. Wilkes was not. Where was the blood on your clothes that you were worried about? On my suit. But nowhere else. A jacket and pair of pants secured by police had no blood on them at all. The offender would have blood all over them. Was this a botched investigation? An expert says yes. The system did indeed convict the wrong men. I can't think of a rational, uh, a rational explanation for why they shouldn't get a new trial. So, do you think these men deserve a new trial? Go to Newsnet5.com and you can vote for yourself. Not sure? Well, we're not finished yet. Tomorrow at 6, stunning new developments. I find a key witness who never testified and a claim that a cop was involved with the victim. I'll see you back here on News Channel 5 at 6 o'clock. And Dwayne, you've learned that the Ohio Public Defender's Office is already looking into this matter based on what you found? Not only looking into it, they've been here to the station to look at what we've uncovered. Part of what we'll hear from tomorrow is uh, the evidence that they just themselves have secured to look for a new trial for these two individuals. Very interesting to see what happens. Thank you, Mark. Tonight, hundreds of people are weighing in on a major Five on Your Side investigation that aired last night at 11 by our chief investigator, Dwayne Pullman. Dwayne spent three years investigating a local murder and raised big questions about evidence that sent two men to prison for life. Now Dwayne has new details and a witness who never testified. Dwayne? Danita, last night at 11, I showed miscues and mistakes. Tonight, I find a man who could blow this case wide open. On the morning of April 1st, 1999, George Hale was walking down Divine Street when he saw someone. Seen someone coming out of the house with a garbage bag. That house was this one, where Yvonne Lane, a mother of five, had just been murdered. It's garbage bag. This black trash bag. It looked like it was filled? No, it was like half full. Of... Hale says the man carrying that garbage bag did not match the description of Joe Wilkes, who was convicted of killing Lane, or David Thorne, who was convicted of hiring Wilkes to do it. What was he wearing? Oh, uh, he was wearing a pair of, I know he was wearing jeans and... A flannel shirt or something, or? No. T-shirt? It was a dark shirt, T-shirt or something. When Hale was walking back home, he saw the same house wrapped in crime scene tape. Did you approach any of the detectives out there or police officers? Yes, I did. And Hale told those detectives what he saw. So you told him you saw somebody coming out? Yeah, I seen someone that came out of there, out of the house. He agreed to look at a photo lineup. Did you find somebody you recognized? Um, I did point it out somebody. Hale says detectives told him later the picture he pointed out was that of an Alliance police officer. Do you think police were involved, George? I'm thinking they had something involved in it. Yet, George Hale would never get a chance to tell his story here in court. George Hale was not really a reliable witness. John Leach was a key detective in the case. Did you know who he identified? I, no, I don't. He was a police officer. That's, okay. that's before the investigation. Okay. Well, like I said, I do remember it coming down to the point that he was not a reliable witness. Reliable or not, George Hale never testified in the murder trial. Lawyers defending David Thorne say they were never even told about Hale. David Thorne and Joe Wilkes were convicted in what prosecutors called a murder-for-hire plot. I'm gone. They don't see me. What do they care? I'm out of sight. I'm out of mind. 
I was just a number to them once it was done. But is it? I believe the police let him out. Sue Glass, a postal clerk turned investigator, hasn't given up. She's devoted seven years to uncovering the truth in the hope of freeing two men. And that's my goal, is to get two innocent men out of prison. Sue Glass isn't alone. He didn't do this. What? He did not do this. Linda McLaughlin says David Thorne did not do it, and neither did Joe Wilkes. McLaughlin, the mother of Yvonne's boyfriend, says Yvonne Lane was using sex to extort money before her death. She slept with everybody. Yes, yeah, she did. Yvonne Lane's own mother testified an Alliance police officer, Quentin Artis, was repeatedly badgering Yvonne Lane. And he said, Yvonne promised me a back rub if I would bring her license to her. McLaughlin says she was at Yvonne's house when Officer Artis showed up demanding sex. Did he say sex? Yes, he did. Officer Artis is no longer a cop, but an inmate in Marion serving a sentence for sexual battery and gross sexual imposition after he was convicted in another case involving a child. Those who have closely examined this case from a forensics expert... So in my opinion, uh, I w I'm hard pressed to find a reason why they shouldn't get a new trial. ...to an amateur investigator say there is only one answer here. The system did convict the wrong men. No doubt in my mind, I'd, I'd stake my life on it. I probably am. Ohio's public defender's office is dealing with this case, and based on what I've uncovered, we're told an appeal, a federal appeal, is imminent. While police stand by their investigation, an overwhelming number of you agree that these two men do indeed deserve a new trial.